nothing nothing medical man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a little spiritual, bit uh, spiritual now. We go uh, shall spiritual. I say uh, confused on uh, the different parts of the anatomy that Master described? Yeah. So the wise contemplate the body as impure. Uh, the initial verse uh, we contemplate the body as impure in all its 36 elements. Okay, we'll run through that in the next slide. This element. The nine orifices uh, constantly discharge filled. We'll run through that in the next slide again. And the three realms instability makes people afraid. Um, now, this, of course, you know that um, the three realms instability also are uh, within samsara and um, obviously uh, within the cyclic existence, uh, it will move within that cycle and this uh, endless cycle. So those who have wisdom in uh, how we can be liberated from the three realms. And uh, we, to do so, then we have a sense of renunciation and renunciation. And today the focus is on the impurity of the body, which I explain a little bit more in the next slide. We'll be liberated from the causation of suffering. One must eliminate delusion and end the part. So then this, um, we some, uh, contemplate about liberation and to do so we need to renounce. Then the question is, what is it we are renouncing? And in so doing, can they liberate them from the causation of suffering so that we do not incur any more <laughs> karmic causes? So, all right, this must explanation. First thing to note is in practicing the fourfold mindfulness, now the body as impure, content the body is impure and um, you see, in, in Buddhism, there are four mindfulness, uh, four, four mindfulness. And the first one was in Buddhism. And this was, um, Master explained this in some weeks ago. So the body as impure is the first one, right? The first, the first four mindfulness. The second one is feelings as suffering. So feeling is suffering. So even if one have pleasure of enjoyment and the worldly pleasure, worldly happiness is actually a moment we need to unhappiness. So therefore, this feeling that we have is part of the skanda and uh, it is suffering. So what are the skanda? The skandhas are five, form, feeling, perception, mental formation or mental, or mental volition and consciousness. This is five skandhas. So therefore, the the, um, the so the third uh, of the fourfold mindfulness uh, is the mind is impermanent, and the last of which um, is so, yeah. the uh, phenomena is without self. So so therefore, this today's uh, body uh, feeling is mind. Is, the uh, fourfold uh, mindfulness of the body is impure. So the body is impurity of the body. So Masa went on to explain in detail uh, what is this impurity of the six elements. I think that first 12, I think is quite obvious, um, which I listed down uh, on the slide here. So this 12, the outer appearance, uh, we, we can, uh, this is pretty much obvious. Number next one, the 12 of our structure. I think, I think everybody understand this too. Now, this is a part of the internal elements, like what Dr. Eddie say. Yeah. You see, I, you can see the liver, the gallbladder, intestine, so on and so forth. And then, now this is where I, I lost my understanding too, with Chera. Uh, and around the white flame, okay, we understand. I, I thought with Chera referring to the chest abdominal uh, cavity, uh, which also includes the, um, the with Chera fat. Uh, like, but like, what, like what Dr. Eddie says, so I'm not sure what exactly this two refers to here. But nevertheless, um, we know that the, the all together there are 36. Now, even when healthy, um, even when we have all this healthy, uh, body, healthy body, our nine orifices, which is actually, the body very crudely is, is nine, nine, nine holes okay, in us. So of this nine, there are seven, seven in our face, right? So two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, right? So the six plus one, which is the mouth. Then there are two more for discharging stool and urine. 
Okay, all together they are nine. So even there is that our body is healthy, we're still discharging impurities and waste, and this part of our detoxification in our body. Now, you know, one of the training that, um, that I think I may have mentioned to you all before, one of the training that um, for the lamas uh, that they do uh, to understand or be mindful of the mindfulness of the impurity of the body is actually uh, they train some of these uh, lamas to actually meditate in front of a corpse or rotting body so that one is always mindful of the number one is the impurity of the body and also the decay of the body that at the end of the day is all emptiness. So the worldly ways, um, the, um, like what my home sister said uh, just now, um, so these worldly ways that we live in, and, and for us, we're householders, right? So we do live in the worldly ways because we're not in the monastic practice. So we all have all these desires, which is still looming around us. And how many physical desires do we have? I must mention that we the desire to eat. There is sexual desires, as well as boundless greed of possession. And boundless greed of possession is, and, and we are in the desires realm. You know? Right, so all this desire manifests uh, from two areas. So one is the desire from the heart, and the other one is the ego, the ego that is that they want to uh, the greed of wanting to win over somebody or up somebody else um, or position power and so on and so forth. So those who have wisdom to contemplate on this and give rise to a sense of renunciation. So when we understand that more these things that arises. Um, that we have these desires in all of us. Um, we want to renounce, and without, unless we renounce, we will still be anchored um, in the in this um, samsaric realms. So therefore, we must uh, constantly comprehend uh, on how so many desires can physically and mentally um, exhaust us. And at the end, all this pursuit that at the end of the day, at the end of life, uh, means nothing. And, um, and therefore, uh, as a result of which we pursue all these things, uh, exhausted, get stressful, and at the end of the day, means nothing. So we let go all these desires and put our body to good use. It will be a vessel for spiritual cultivation. So despite that, the body is uh, that we have will at the end of the decay. So that means what we have, that if we understand the part of the body that the vessel that we have is a decay, it's a certain lifetime, it will last. So therefore what we have is that if you then take the part of this so-called, the body being a vessel, then vessel to trust, a vessel means it's just, uh, a, trans a transport, right? A transport for you. So what are you actually transporting then? You actually have this consciousness that in this lifetime to be in practice. But the problem is the, that we indulge in our body so much that we, uh, I remember a lot of people go to the extent to, to spend so much money and time in the body, but not realizing it's only a vessel. And that vessel give us the time of consciousness in this lifetime to be able to grow from a mind consciousness to the higher level of consciousness. So therefore, if you contemplate on that, then you know what is the function of the body for us in this lifetime. We need to have a healthy body. That means you need to have a good body the good body is the one that gives us the good mind. But if we indulge so much in the body, we lose the good mind. Then that is the reason why. So the good mind is always above the good body. And that's carrying a higher importance of the good body. So because we understand our body is very unclean, we must further comprehend how matters and objects around us lead to create causes of suffering. 
So we must then therefore distance ourselves away from that and by illuminating, so eliminating illusion. And then enter the path. So what are these lessons learned that we have learned today? Now, this is the six I mean, and the nine orifices are filthy and unclean. So it's impurity of our body. So if it's impure already of the body, then we should not therefore indulge in the body. And then understand what this vessel, what is the purpose of this vessel that we have in this lifetime. And, um, and when one is, is so, um, um, and the, because of the indulgence, and at the end of the day, there is actually nothing. So <laughs> I like this sentence in the transcript, say, for the sake of this nothing, we create such karma that is something. Um, so out of nothing, which is anyway nothing where your body is, but when you create something, and this is the, 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 the understanding or the contemplation or the realization of the body, that we need to move away uh, towards uh, cultivation. What is the purpose of the body? So at the end of the day, what is the purpose of life? So when it comes to circumstantial and uh, direct retribution, uh, which is about karma, and um, nobody can run away with karma, even wealthy and most powerful person have to face the karma. At the end of the day, um, you go through death, there will be sickness. So the bodies are likewise impure. So these are the causes and conditions that arises. So we do not know what causes and conditions that will arise in our, in our life, the rest of our life. So these are the life becomings that will unfold and arising from uh, past causes. So when the conditions are right, things will manifest. But what important of all is that at the end of the day, when all this arises, we must make, we must make the right choice in our life. And um, this is what the Dharma is, so the teachers, that we have then grow our consciousness to be able to choose one sleep. Um, and so in so doing, and this is where our practice will grow. So in contemplation, a very simple contemplation uh, today, the body is consumed by time which I just um, relate to just now, that we only have this lifetime and the body will just decay. And so therefore we need to understand what is the function of this body, this is a vessel that we have, what's the purpose of this? And the face ages with time and yet we paint our face faces um, and yet whatever you do, uh, it will go off. And then the body will weaken as a result of which. But all these things that we know that are arising from all these things, but at the end of the day, if we didn't understand what we're practicing and what cultivation, the great loving heart does not. It matures in compassion. So therefore, you understand this vessel then this is where the consciousness that we should be practicing. There is the virtues and wisdom that someone that's going to mature. And so what this is what we should be indulging is not so much in a body. So in a relationship, um, and a lot of relationship arises from um, our thoughts, our words and our deeds. So therefore we need to watch our mind for it becomes thoughts. And, um, and thoughts, if you then apply, today is the first of the four form uh, mindfulness, then we apply the four right efforts. So that whenever it's unwholesome, that hasn't a reason, we prevent it from arising. Whenever it's unwholesome, that has a reason, we abandon it quickly. So we watch your speech, or it become words. So this, if we have the right understanding, we have the right thoughts, then our speech, the right speech will follow and watch our body for it becomes actions. Okay, Kalan brothers and sisters, thank you so much. Yes, Kalan, Kalan so much, uh, Brother Chin, for your daily uh, marvelous uh, sharing and insights. It's, uh, it's very, very you know, insightful to, to read, to hear from your great work. Send that to us every morning. Yeah, coming so much.